Hey there everyone! Today we're going to be doing more Gen 6 RNG. We're going to be focusing on the wild RNG. And I've got my screen open here. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do it correctly. And then we're after that we'll go back and we'll actually do the whole process from start to finish. You, I'm just going to show you the finished result here and then you can be aware that that took like an hour and a half of setup. And it will vary depending upon how uh, how uh, lucky you are and how good are you are at math, which I am not. So let's just get into this one, and we will see it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and turn. And here's an encounter. And it's shiny. There we go. So you can see, we have found a shiny Volbeat, and... What it looks like from what I did was I just closed my menu and took a step. Not even took a step, I turned around. And that's essentially how you're going to be triggering wild encounters. Now you're probably going, Cappy, why'd you do all that? Why didn't you just use honey? Why didn't you just go in your item menu, pop a honey, and get whatever encounter you wanted? Well, if you hadn't listened, I had mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll mention it right here. Uh, because of the way Gen 6 works, you only get a Pokemon encounter, a single Pokemon encounter with honey in some areas. Not all, just some of them. Uh, and in the rest, if you use honey, you encounter a horde. Now this would be great if you're looking for a horde, but there's only a very limited number of horde Pokemon encounters, only three slots per area. So if you want to capture something like, let's say you want to get this Volbeat with Illuminate, that I'll bring up its stats for right here. There you go. If I wanted a Volbeat with Illuminate, there was no, there's nothing else I can do other than learn how to manipulate the tiny MT so that we get a wild encounter where we want it, and then we will make sure that the frame that we can encounter it on will be a shiny frame. And it is a little bit of work, I won't lie, but you can get some really neat results. So stick with me, and we'll go back, way back, and we'll actually find out how to get this encounter. So just bear with me, and we'll, we'll start that right now. All right, so I've reloaded my save here. We're going to do this from the start. So the I, I'm on Route 7. I'm in a grassy field. And that matters because while this method that I'm going to teach you works in, in all the areas, how you do it is different depending upon if you're in a cave, if you're in a tall grassy patch, if you're in a small... A short grassy patch, flowers, it, it, it's up to you to kind of figure out the general gist of how to hit your frame. I'll, I'll put in the description some like of the, my findings, some routes where I've had success and how I've hit that, but um, yeah, this, just, so just, this this will work for Route 7, this, this piece of grass, and it'll also work for connecting cave and reflection cave. It, in general, it'll work for caves, but here we are. First things first, we're going to Go ahead and pop a our bag open, and we're going to use a repel. And the reason for this is because when you're in grass and you have an encounter, there is a um, cooldown, a number of steps that you that you can take that you have to take before you'll see another encounter. So the best thing to do is just to run around and get as many steps in so that you know that you'll be able to trigger an encounter. That should be more than enough. And I'm going to face up, just because that's my own personal preference. You can face whichever way you want. The general general idea of what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our tiny MT. We're going to calibrate it. Then we're going to find a frame where we can trigger an encounter. And then when we get to that frame, we will turn our character and the encounter will trigger. Just like I showed you in the very start. Now I close the menu... 10 frames ahead of my target, turn, and then bam, encounter. So, first things first, we have to ta calibrate our tiny MT. So, let's bring up our tiny MT. Here we go, here's our tiny timeline. And we don't have to have our main RNG up yet because we are not going to be doing anything with that right now, at least. And then I get my RNG, and you can see, you can see I put my tiny MT seeds on the screen here. So, here we go. Tiny MT, and we just go ahead and populate this in here. Now, 
uh, keep in mind, if you are using a 3DS, the, the reason that I'm using Citra is just because it's difficult to manipulate things like this, and so it's nice to have the fallback of save states in case you're bad at math like I am. But but if you're doing this on a 3DS, you can actually connect it using the NTR helper like I showed you for the ORAS ID. And if you hit this calibrate button and let the emulation run, uh, let the game run, it will automatically fill in this information and ev and everything that's relevant. And it's just really really simple. But the downside is that you don't have save states. So, you know, it's a trade-off. So anyways, here we are. We have our we have our um it's a tiny MT ready to go, but we still need to calibrate it. So to do that, we need to do advances until we finally hit, until we finally see the tiny MT seeds here change. So I'm going to do some advances. You don't need to be a hundred percent accurate with it, because this is just to get a general idea of the timeline, and hopefully your target is going to be like 150 frames or so. So you can you have some wiggle room, but you do kind of have to be in the ballpark, so to speak. So, just kind of advancing this until they change, and then and then we, we'll note it down in the tiny timeline tool. So I'm just going to advance a little willy-nilly, because we're just going to get, like I said, a ballpark. A ballpark. Being within, like, 10, 15 frames of where, where things will actually change will be important just because it, it'll help your math out later, because you've got to... Oh, there we go. It changed. Getting the um, timeline right is one thing, then you have to get a shiny frame into that timeline. So, let's see, it says 5409, but I know it was actually more like 5407. Keep in mind that even if it changed at 5409, like here, you would, in the tool here, put 5408, because it's the frame before. Alright, in grass... So you want, in adjustment, you want normal wild, and in grass, the encounter rate is 13. How does that work? So you can see here, in the tiny timeline tool, that there is this encounter question mark. Um, basically the game, each time you take a step, for each tiny timeline, for each, each of these tiny uh, seeds, the game essentially rolls a random number between one, 0 and 100, and if that number is under the encounter rate, that will be an actual encounter. And you can see the, that the tool helpfully highlights in yellow any frame that will actually be an encounter. So yeah, so, may, so having your encounter rate is important because if it's too high, you might try to hit a target that won't actually work. And if it's too low, well, you're just making things harder on yourself. But in grass, it's 13. In caves, it is 7. Um, and then the reason that you saw me catch a Volbeat, well, encounter a Volbeat earlier, is because they have Illuminate, which doubles the encounter rate, so just keep that in mind. You could also have a Synchronize in lead if that's what you want. You can see right here in the tiny timeline, they do give you frames, uh, if seeds where they, where the sync will work. Anyway, so we got this uh, all set up. Now we just hit create. We leave, leave this box unchecked. Target frame is just for your own amusement, really. So, we're actually looking at what we're going, what, how things are going to progress. Now, I'm going to tell you in the in this particular area, I know that you're going to want to close your menu and turn an index before your actual encounter. So, like, let's say I want to get to this. In you're going to turn an index before. You're going to trigger the encounter, but the encounter slot will actually be here will actually be an index later. So, gosh, that sounds really complicated. But but it, this is how I've noticed it where in here. In some areas like route 1 and route 2, you will turn on the index and you'll get the next index's encounter. And by when I say index, I mean this particular thing. Like this is index 24, this is an index 25. So, you turn on in route 1 or 2, you would turn on index 24. And then you would get index 25's encounter slot, which in this case is the same, so you'd still get the same encounter. But in this area, it's different. Again, you turn on, you would turn on 29, you would trigger the encounter on 30, and then you would have 31's uh, encounter slot. Oh boy. 
So now you got to figure, you got to find find something vi viable. Now you can't turn on this because every time you turn, it advances tiny empty by one. You go up one index. So you turn on forty four. The in it would try to look for an encounter on forty five, find nothing, and you would be sad. So this one looks good. We're this is just a test. We're going to, we're just going to. I'm just going to do a test to. Sh show that you can in fact trigger an encounter this is not normal normally like part of your setup of just just showing this so we have to advance to around frame 105 to 1 and then we'll we'll close our menus 10 frames ahead because it takes about 10 frames to actually close your menu and you want to have as little time out of menu as possible because that that will stop tiny mt from drifting so we will do it we'll do it uh, 10 frames ahead of time then we will turn and we should encounter a slot three Pokemon, which in Route Seven here is um, da, da, da. Route Seven is Flabebe, a yellow fl nope nope sorry Crow Crowagunk Crowagunk. We're not in the flowers. That's one thing to note. Also, the um, flowers give you different encounters. So you know, there's that. So this should be a Crowagunk. All right, let's give this a try. So we're going to advance and and uh, 105. 2-1, not too far away, we'll speed it up, but I'll, I'll come back when that, when we hit that spot. Alright, we're back, and you can see here we're at frame 105-2-1, um, and you can see our tiny MT seeds are, are all here, and then you look at our tiny timeline, and they match up. Exactly. So you know that your timeline isn't off or anything. You're good. So here we are. We're at 105.21. So I'm going to hold down Z. Well, sorry. Z key on my keyboard. I'm going to hold down to close the menu. And now we're at 105.31, which is the earliest possible frame we can move. Keep in mind, do not move using skates while doing this. Make sure you're using the D-pad. And now we will turn... And we should see an encounter. Good. You can see that the screen started darkening, um, and your character didn't take another step. That if you take another step, you know you you messed up. But there we go. We can see, and we have an encounter, and it is in fact a Krogunk, And I'm also you know too fast. But there you go. So we've triggered our encounter. That's great. So we've proven that this is viable. Um, which again is not something you normally have to do. You don't have to if you use the full repel in grass you're definitely well past the cooldown. It's like three steps in grass, but it's much higher in cave, so I just use a repel because it's 300 Pokebucks and it gives you 100% peace of mind. But now we've proven that, that that we can actually trigger an encounter. Now you go, all right, that's great. You can get an encounter. Now how do you make it shiny? Well, now we have to go into our into our uh, RNG me menu right here. All right, so we got our initial seed and everything. Uh, let's put it in there, because I am fairly certain that I don't have the right seed in there. Alright, so I get my seed here. Got the version right, got our sh trainer shiny value. We're looking at normal wild. You can ignore rate and everything. This is, essentially, if you put in the right rate, it'll create, and then you go to create timeline, it'll show you what frames are hittable, given your current, um, timeline, but you're going to manipulate it anyway, so don't don't bother. Um, it, and it will just make you depressed if you create a timeline to look for a shiny Pokemon, because again, it's going to be so difficult to line things up just naturally, especially if you don't even have the shiny charm, that it's going to just like give you like a f target frame of like 200,000 frames higher than, than you are, and it'll just make you feel sad inside. So, uh, Sync Nature, if you can't out Sync, put that down. Um, I will tell you right now that the the target we are getting will not be synced. Well, mm, that's a good question. I actually don't know because it's this. I don't know if it's if it's like this or if it's like this. Either way, figure it out for yourself. I, that 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 that's one of the joys you have. But here we go. So back to this tool. We got our we got our um, initial seed. We've got our frame. We can find a shiny frame that will make us all happy inside. And shiny only. Let's go. You do not, do note, you do not have to worry about for this one 
whether it's even or odd. And that's because we're going to manipulate that. I'll show you how we actually make it so that we, we can be even or odd depending upon how we want things to go. Um, I'm also going to up in, increase my delay to 8 because I have done quite a few of these and I know that I know that my delay is always 8. So we can actually see here that we've got quite a few shiny frames that aren't too far away and this one isn't too bad. This one is not even for a crow gunk. It's not great. Um, you can also take a look at our tiny, tiny timeline too and see if there's anything here that we that we prefer over over that. Just keep in mind, like, like I said in this area, that you're looking for a frame that has a dash here, which is, means that it's not normally hittable, but the turn will make it hittable. And then just keep in mind that the next slot is where you're actually going to get the encounter. So like this would actually be slot 9, which is a... Um, I have my I have my chart right here, slot nine, which is a uh, Roselia, I think. Um, yeah, Roselia. Which yeah, so so if, I'll I'll put the link to Pokemon slots down here. That's this is where I get it. It's a fairly accurate uh, location for getting all your slot. You, oh, your encounter slot information, because you, this way you can look at it and know what you're getting. Um, six, six is a Swirlix. That's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so essentially you just kind of find what you want. And uh, four is a Volbeat. All right, yeah, we're gonna go for this for this Volbeat right here. So it's at twelve. Uh, one two four three five to one two six one five is our is the range in which we can actually um, encounter it. And looking at our tool, there, there isn't anything that is within that um, particular... There's nothing within that particular range. So, the thing is now, we have to move that shiny frame up, essentially. Because, let's use this one as our target. 13217. Well, you can see there's a gap there's a difference of about a thousand-ish frames. So we need to make it so that the encounter doesn't happen he here, but instead somewhere in somewhere where this is in the range. And there's two ways to do that. So if if your shiny frame is above the encounter, like let's say your shiny frame was in this this range here, there's some manipulations you could do if like you turn around or open your bag or close your bag, it'll advance your tiny MT by a lot. And so you can kind of do that to kind of make it so that your your encounter goes closer to it. I don't personally like that because of the fact that when you do that, you risk overshooting your frame. The second method is if your frame is beyond, like let's say, yeah, it's like our frame is thirteen two seven one, which is right here, and the encounter we want is right here. Well. You, there's a way. If you go in, I've, I think I've mentioned this before, but if you go into your item bag, your tiny MT seeds will stay exactly the same, but your frame counts will still advance. So, what you can do is you go into your bag for a while, and then you exit your bag, and so you've advanced like 2,000, 3,000 frames or whatever, and so now you're, now your your tiny MT timeline, your tiny timeline, is still exactly the same as, as about but now your uh, shiny frame is is hopefully within your your uh, encounter window. This is really complicated, as you can see. I'm going into great depth here, and and that's because again, the only way to encounter a single Pokemon, like on Route Seven, the only way to encounter a shiny Volbeat is to do this method, or like yeah, even a, a Swirlix. There's some. Like a Roselia is a is a is a horde encounter, so you can go ahead and do a horde with honey, and that's a lot easier. But this is how you do it, and it 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 stinks because you know I came from Gen Seven was my first game where it was just pop honey, get shiny, and it was incredibly easy. Here it's a lot more work, but it's it I, I'm I'm gonna say it's worth it for me, but it may not be for you, and I fully understand that if you want to just do a different gen, but. Yeah, so you can see that this is this is something that's that I've spent a lot of time on. There weren't really any guides on it as recently as like six months ago. 
So put in a lot of work on figuring out how to make this consistent and accessible. And if you do this on retail, which I've 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 done this on an actual 3DS hardware, more power to you. You you seriously get my respect for doing that. Anyways, now we have to do you guessed it, math. So here we go. I brought up my calculator. Uh, I've put in my shiny frame is one three two seven one, and I'm going to take out something in this range minus something in this range. I'll go with one two five hundred because that should be that gives us enough wiggle room. One two five hundred. And so that gives me 771. So essentially you'd want to stay in your bag for another 771 frames. However, that's not exact because when you exit the bag, it also advances by like your time, your, you advance something like, like uh, eight or nine indexes, which could be another thousand frames or so. So you don't really know how much to go in your bag. You're going to you're going to kind of overshoot or undershoot and then figure out where to go from there. So that's why I recommend save states and why it's so difficult to do it with uh with just a 3DS. What you can do is and what what I'm going to do here is we're going to start at the very low end. We're going to start at 771. So let's see. We're going back to the, our our save state here. Okay. Going back to our save state, and we are on frame 5410. So 5410 plus 771 is 6181. Now, yeah, so, so you want to stay in the bag until about 6181, then exit. You want to be as far back as possible. Because again, you advance something like eight or nine uh, indexes when you exit the bag, and then an additional one when you close the menu. So you want to make sure you have enough wiggle room so that you're not like getting out of the menu and overshooting your your encounter entirely. So so that's why I'm doing it all the way back from frame five thousand. All right, so six one eight one. Now another thing to note is okay. So this this our target here is an odd number. So what you want to do is you want to leave the bag on an even frame. If you leave the bag on an even frame, it'll set you up when you leave uh, to so that you'll be on an odd track. If you leave the bag on an odd frame, you'll be on an even track. Pretty easy to remember that, but that's way, that way we can manipulate it so we don't have to worry about being like, oh, well, I'm only odd right now, so I won't ever be able to hit an even. No, you can hit it. You can do it. It's a little manipulation. All right, so here we go. I'm going to get into the bag. All right, and we're going to advance all the way up to 16181. And which which is really good. Actually, we're going to advance to 1680. Uh, sorry, 6180 because we don't want to we don't want to exit on an, on an odd frame. And again, I'm just being exact because I'm trying to show this off. All right, so 6180 we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we close our bag, and then we close our, me our our menu and reopen it. The reason that after you leave the bag and I close the menu and reopen it real fast is because when whenever you go into the bag and then you close your menu, your tiny MT advances by one. So this way we get that out of the system. We've we've closed the menu, reopen it. Now if we, as long as we don't go back in the bag, it won't advance again when we close the menu. So we'll be good. So now we have to recalibrate. So we go ahead and we copy. I'm going to hide our um, RNG tool right now. But we go ahead and we're going to recalibrate our tiny MT. So we go ahead, put all this information in here, and then we do the exact same thing. Except this time, try to be more exact because again, this this is the difference of sometimes you could have your encounter be like two frames out, two, like two frames below the high end of the window or low end of the window, and if you're not exact, you might think you have an encounter, but you actually don't. So let's try to be a little bit more, oh boy, yeah, a little bit more exact. And we should also see this change on an odd frame. And that's another way of knowing that we're correct. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that because you advance so many tiny MT uh, frames. 
uh, indexes when when you leave the bag, this is going to be off still. So we're going to have to remath things and do it again, and that's why we have safe states. Ah, boy. This is a long one. And this happens sometimes. Alright, so... Alright, I'm a little... I, I advance a little bit too far, but it happened around 6493. Let's just say that. Close enough. Close enough for government work. Alright, so let's go down. Now we've recalibrated. Let's go to... 13271... All right, so one three two seven one would fall in here. You can see it's not. This isn't right. Um, this was. Uh, was that even the encounter? No, down here. Down here was the encounter. No, not not even down here. It's a four four. Here we are. You can see we actually really, really undershot. We should have stayed in the bag for a significantly longer amount of time because the frame we want is index 52, and we're all the way down here so at 82. So yeah, we, we are very off. And again, because that's because I knew I knew this was going to happen because we can you when you close the when you get out of the bag, there's quite an advance. So we're just going to go ahead and bring out our calculator again and go ahead and figure out kind of where how how many frames we should have gone, gone in there. So let's see. Uh, right now, our difference is, is one three two seven one minus I don't know. Let's say. Uh, um, oh right, here we are. Uh, minus one o one o four ten thousand four hundred. All right, so we got a difference of about. 2871 frames. So we just can add that onto our initial where we started. 6181 plus 2871, 9052. Okay, so now we just go back, go back to our save state, and this time instead we will just, we'll go in the bag at the exact same point, and we will advance all the way out. Instead of to 6181, we're going to advance to 9052. And so yeah, this is kind of how you do it. All right, so we're going to advance to 9052, and just bear with me, I'll skip ahead. I'll skip ahead for you. You don't have to watch this. All right, we're back. Made it to 9052. Um, this is a good frame, too, because it's also even, so we don't have to worry about um, double-checking this. We're just going to exit the bag, and we're going to repeat what we just did. We're going to exit, close the menu, reopen it up immediately. All right, so now you can actually see this is great because you did things. If you do things fast enough, then it makes your life a little bit easier because you can see that our tiny, our, our tiny timeline is exactly the same as the tiny timeline we calibrated over here. So that's really handy. Now, another thing is that your frame is going to, uh, you, the frame that everything advances is equal. So hopefully you've done things at the exact. If you're on the same scene and everything, the difference will be equal. And you know that that sounds complicated but it's actually not so we're going to just bring up look in our tool so last time the advance happened at six four nine three about we could just add the extra the two eight seven one to it so let's see six four nine three plus two eight seven one so we expect to advance somewhere around nine three six four ish ish because i also close at a different frame and everything and we're already at nine two Three six, so we we think that it'll be about a hundred frames. So I'm going to start advancing. I mean, it, it gives you a rough idea, but you still have to check. And if I'm off again, we just redo our math. It's okay. This is not a big deal. This is just Pokemon. And all said, this is still going to be faster than you actually just hunting it. Uh, six four. Yeah, six four about. So we're almost there. Okay, I was wrong. It was nine three six five, but that's fine. So we go ahead and re recalibrate nine three six five. 
Good, it's an odd frame, so we're still happy. Now let's go to our target, 1327. 13271, 13271 definitely falls within this range, and here we've got the right index. So this should be a Volbeat encounter. So okay, we you did it. You did it. Now the now now that you've got your shiny frame inside your window, all you have to do is advance, close the men close the menu ten frames before your target, turn, and hopefully profit. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make a save state just to be on the safe side here. Okay. And now we're going to advance out to 13271. Alright, here we are. We are 10 frames out from our target, so let's hold down the close menu button. Here we are. Remember, D-pad only. We triggered the encounter. That's our first that's our first good sign. Alright, now let's close this tiny timeline tool so that we can actually look at the stats of what we encounter. So at, one thing to note, as soon as the screen darkens, at this point, you can already update the wild tab on your RNG on Citra RNG, and brr, boom! You see that it updated to a Volbeat, and it's shiny. Uh, that's because, again, I knew what my delay was. I know that my delay is always it's been very, very consistently eight. So I just skipped the whole, oh, I got this wrong, let's figure out where we are. So, because you've seen this, you've seen me calibrate my delay a bunch of times. But you can see, we, we already know we got what we wanted, so now the only thing left to do is to reap the rewards. And there you go! So that is how you do a wild encounter. Again, in, in caves, you're doing the same thing, especially with the... Uh, with the tiny timeline, how you're going to try to hit your target. In most gra grassy areas, you're going to hit, you're going to go to hit a um, an encounter on the same index, and then get the next slot's encounter. It's I'll, I'll put it I'll put some examples in there in the description, but um, that's that's how it works, and this is how you'll be able to encounter any Pokemon that appears in a single battle. Uh, this is mostly use this is the most useful for X Y because of the fact that this is the only way to encounter a shiny like Volbeat or other stuff, for example. Uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire also have Dexnav, which I'll get to, which is a actually a super new method, as in, like, I just learned how to do this a week ago. This is the first time that I've, I was able to get it working. And there's a lot of help from uh, the people at PokemonRNG.com and their Discord. But, but the, that you can actually use to encounter Pokemon, and it's a little bit easier, but it is, and I will say this, it is completely 100% non-viable for an actual 3DS, because you need to use save states for it. Absolutely 100% need to use save states. So, so if you don't want to use an emulator for this, then you'll, um, you'll have to stick with the normal wild method here. But yeah, in XY, this is pretty much your only bet for catching some of these Pokemon because uh, they don't have stationary battles and you can't use honey in most areas. Some areas, you can. If there's no horde, you can use honey and we'll just go to my honey tutorial, which will be the next episode, to as to how you make that work. But essentially, you're just going to hit your tiny MT seed, open up your bag to freeze it, and then use honey on the frame you, you want. But anyways, we got it. We, got, we finally found this Volbeat. It has Illuminate, which, again, Illuminate is going to be handy if you want to do a lot of these because it will double your encounter rate. But I will see you all next time for some more RNG. And uh, yeah, take a breath take a breather. This was a pretty complicated one. I'm trying to decide if it's actually more complicated than SOS or not. I think it is. But yeah, you take a break, you earned it. And I will see you all next time. <laughs>